the prevalence of cancer in South Africa. But the doctors are here, they'll talk to us about their experiences so far. But let's just have a chat, uh, of course, with the organizer of this Pink Drive. You know her, we've heard her before in studio. We've heard her here during the past drive, the previous drives. But let's just remind you of the importance of having these drives and the work, of course, that Pink Drive does. Nolene joins us this morning. Nolene, good morning to you and thank you so much for joining us. Just for the sake of our viewers who are seeing this initiative for the very first time, what's the significance of having it? The significance is taking health to those who cannot afford to have services in the cancer space such as those that we deliver because we believe that early detection will save lives. So with the doctors obviously um, here at Barrow, which is where we started seven years ago with Dr. Kabash, um, is, is adv ad ad advising people that you know go to a clinic but you will be attended to i'm going to come back to you because i think it's also important to reflect on the issue that you even reach your your most deepest rural areas i want to bring dr kbash here as nolin said you've been involved in this drive for um over the past seven years and you the head of breast unity at barra hospital talk to us about your experiences so far uh, the issue of early detection is a major concern are you seeing the numbers going down in terms of being able to detect breast cancer on time uh, we certainly, uh, in the last seven years, we're looking back at a success story, and it was a success story that, number one, we were creating awareness, what is part of the issue. The other part of the issue is then, of course, to deliver, and uh, we are a very passionate team to deliver. We are very pas passionate public servants in what we are doing. And uh, it is enormous uh, logistic involved in breast cancer care. We, we have the numbers and we can show that uh, probably 10 years ago, 70% uh, of our patients were advanced, uh, stage 3 and stage 4. At the moment it is less than 50% and that implied a lot of uh, hard work on, a, on a, an ongoing basis. But I, I think uh, it, it, it is enormously helpful if different uh, uh, role players like NGOs and like public hospitals are, are working hand in hand instead of uh, uh, paralyzing each other. And uh, num number one, I think on a day like that there's always a promise that is coming through. Number two, we on our side, we must be able to deliver and we were serious about that. All right, the minister is here next to me listening. I'll, I'll give you a, um, an opportunity to respond to that. But you were telling me uh, earlier on Dr. Murugan that um, you are actually the first people that uh, the breast cancer patients stop by. You have to do you know, a whole lot of things in terms of um, treatment and so on. Talk to us about that. So. Like Dr. Kubash was saying, the logistics challenge of treating breast cancer, I think we all underestimate it. You know, in terms of the patient getting their diagnosis on time, having a suitable treatment plan, and then facilitating how that happens. So it's very important to work as a team. Um, in order to allow that to happen and in our clinic you know it's important to have social workers to have counselors because the diagnosis of breast cancer is not an easy thing to actually hear and to deal with and the implication that it has on the whole community so it's very important that as a team we work together and we make the journey for a patient being diagnosed and being treated and then living thereafter we make it an easier journey for them to be able to do that. And, and Minister, I know uh, I, I just want to bring you into this discussion quickly because it's what many people are saying that if you are not financially well off and you're diagnosed with cancer, then it's a problem at public hospital. You were saying that you can diagnose them here at Barra and then they have to travel to Charlotte Matlake for chemotherapy. What, what's the government doing about the situation? Well, I must say I'm happy to say, talking to the Minister of uh, Health, we are very, very conscious about that because it has made um, access to health when it comes to cancer very expensive. So government is busy with uh, trying to find means which will make sure that um, access to cancer generally as a country becomes affordable to our people. One of those issues, as the doctors are saying, it's your equipment which tends to be very costly and these are some of the things which we are looking at as government to really to move with speed in trying to make sure that they can be affordable because if we do that then it means more of our people will have access to that as you know when people are supposed to go for chemo it's long queues when they're supposed to go for various it's queues it's ten thousand 
queuing for one machine. So what we are doing now is to really negotiate, bring partners from other parts of the world who have such equipment in ensuring that it becomes affordable to our people as we have done with HIV positive people. But I am positive that we are on the right track, but I must also thank the professional people, the health people who have made such a commitment, who are able to ensure that ordinary people have access to the services which they are offering. All right, all right. we'll leave it at that for now. Dr. Semilan, I'm going to come to you in the next hour. You are a gynecologist, so you'll share with us your stories and experiences in the next hour, because now it's 8 o'clock and I have to take you back to our studios in Johannesburg. Leanne is standing by with the news at 8. Good morning to you, Lee.